Hi gorgeous, welcome to High Vibe Honey for the week of the 23rd of December 2019. We are almost at the end of the year. I hope you're ready for Christmas. I hope you're prepped to have a great time. It's going to be lovely. Now, it's also going to be an interesting time based on the card that I've pulled this week. And the card that I have pulled this week is the Five of Wands. Now, traditionally, this is a card about conflict. It's a card about doing battle with other people. But what I really think this card is about for us this week is about doing battle with ourselves. And where are the places that we can rise to the challenge? Where are the places that we can become the best version of ourselves? The truth is that life is not all smooth sailing. And we spoke about this last week. We talked about how incredibly boring a story would be if someone's journey was from A to Z with no deviation. This card is here to prove it to us this week. Now that's not to say that a crazy wrench is gonna be thrown into the works, but something is gonna come up for you where you are gonna be given the option of rising to the occasion or sinking away, avoiding conflict, staying on the couch and like ignoring phone calls. This is where you get to make the choice. And it's in these moments where conflict arises or something happens that we get to really put a stake in the ground about who we are. Are we people that are brave? Are we people that trust in our own abilities? Are we people that go after things fearlessly? Or are we people who are afraid, who can't vocalize what we want or need, who let people take advantage of us, and who shy away from things because we're afraid that we don't know how it's gonna work out. The plot twist of life is that we don't know how anything is gonna work out. And if our pattern, our habitual behavior is to always run when something happens that we don't like, we're really living 20% of the life that we could be living. Because I really believe that when things happen that are difficult, say um, you get dumped, you get cheated on, you get fired, uh, you lose your home, uh, something crazy happens in your business. When those things happen, we really do get the choice as to how we're gonna let that affect us. And there are so many people, I'm sure you know them, who have suffered a setback. Something has happened to them that was painful or difficult and like they're not alone. Something painful and difficult happens to every single one of us. But when that happens, they totally fold, they buckle, they lose their mojo, they're afraid, they don't wanna try again. You know, they get their heart broken and they're like, this was too hot, I'm never doing it again. And they live with their cats till they die and then their cats eat their face. Or, you know, they start a business and it doesn't go the way they thought it would and so they fucking bail out and they work in a call center until the end of time. There are so many people who live this way and who are just afraid of taking the risk and are afraid that they don't know what's gonna happen and so they do what they think is safe. But the secret is that what you think is safe is actually not safe. There is nothing that is safe and when we choose the thing that we think is safe, we are usually choosing the thing that keeps us small, the thing that keeps us from joy, the thing that keeps us from experiencing all the beauty that life has to offer. And so, I really want you to think about this when something comes up for you this week or next year or in five years time where something happens that you don't like, where someone calls you and they're pissed, where something goes terribly wrong and you are faced with the question of how you're gonna deal with it. Are you going to stand up tall and admit your mistakes and do your best to fix whatever has happened or are you going to lock yourself in your bedroom for a week and hope it all blows over without you? That's certainly an option. That is something that you can do, but there are consequences for doing that. There are consequences for your reputation. There are consequences for how other people see you. And the biggest consequence is how you see yourself. If you hide from conflict, if you are not willing to speak up and vocalize your needs and establish your boundaries and all of these things, you will lose faith in yourself. You will lose your self-esteem. You will feel bad about yourself. And you're also putting a deposit in the bank of 
you know, who you believe you are. And every time we respond to a situation, we're like voting with our dollar. We're either saying like, yes, I'm brave or I'm a fucking scaredy cat. And you get to vote with your dollars every single time something comes up. And the more money you put into one bank or the other, the more proof there is that you're brave or you're terrified. And then that leads you to the next situation and the next situation. And it becomes this habitual process of how we respond to things. So obviously I'm going to encourage you to take the road that is harder. And this is not about like fighting the curve and like, you know, swimming upstream and like being doing things with lots of resistance, but it's about doing the thing that is right for you. It's about doing the thing that is going to teach you the skills you need to become the person that you want to be. We don't get to be that person without being tested on it, without practicing the skills. Say for example, you're dating someone and it's not very serious and you're probably not going to marry them or have babies with them, but like you're dating and it's fine. When you're in that thing, even though it's not serious, there will still be things that come up where maybe you feel that uh, you're not, your time's not being respected or you're not being treated the way you'd like to be treated or whatever. And in those moments, you get the opportunity to practice your boundaries. You get the opportunity to practice saying what you want. And the reason that you do this is so that when you get to a relationship that is more important to you, you have skills in this area. It's kind of like the idea of like saving your virginity for like the person you want to marry forever. Well, if you do that, by the time you go to fuck them, you're not going to know how to pleasure them, how to pleasure yourself, how to have a good time, how to relax, how to be in your body, any of those things. The more sex that you have, the better you get at that, right? It's like anything. So you need to be practicing these things in your life. Even if the situation isn't that serious, you still need to practice the skills. And that's what I really want to encourage you to do. And it's even like, you might be in a relationship thing that's not that serious and it's not going the way you want it to go. So you just ghost. I want to encourage you not to ghost. I want to encourage you to take the risk, gulp down your fear and like say how you're feeling, express what's going on, state a boundary, say it's over, whatever you want to do, make a request. But I want you to really step up to the plate this week and express your needs, be there, be present, like really be in your own life. It's so important. So like I said, it's really easy to stay safe and a lot of people do. But the thing is that the people who stay safe will never know the width and depth and breadth of their competency because they've never tested it. They've never pushed on the boundary. They have no idea how far they can go, how good they could actually be. Like think about how accomplished you'd feel if you learned to fly a plane or you wrote a book or you went zip lining above the jungle in Costa Rica like my parents just did. Let me just say this. My mother is 72 years old. She went zip lining. She put on a harness, she put on a helmet and she fucking flew above the jungle in Costa Rica like two weeks ago. She's a boss bitch. Most 72 year olds are not down for that shit. In fact, most 30 year olds are not down for that shit. But if you don't test these things, you will never know how fucking good you are. Like it's one thing to be like, yeah, I'm great and never test it. That's not real. If you really want to test it, you got to be in the arena. You got to really test your skills in a real physical way. So I really want to encourage you to do that this week and not to stay in that safe place and to give yourself the experience of discovering what a badass you truly are. Another way of thinking about this is that you are the star of your own movie. The, your life is your movie. It gets whatever title you want. You get to dress however you like. You get to choose the setting. You get to choose the other characters, the whole nine fucking yards. So the question is, what is this movie about? Is this movie about you taking risks, breaking boundaries, taking on challenges and fucking slaying them and sometimes falling on your face because that's part of the growth process? Or is your movie about lying on the couch, ordering dinner and watching other people live their lives on Instagram while you like idly scroll through your shit while reality television is playing on the TV? 
It is your choice. You get to be whoever you want to be and you know that already. But I really want to remind you, this is your life. The one and only, I don't know about reincarnation. I'm not convinced on past lives. I really think this is all we've got. And when you believe that this is all we've got, it transforms the way that you live your everyday life. If this is the only, you know, Monday, the 23rd of December that you're ever going to fucking live, then what are you going to do with it? Are you going to make it awesome? Or are you going to be like, it's cold. I don't feel like it. Wah, wah, wah. No one else can make your life fun for you. And even if you have family or a partner or friends, it's still not their job to make your life more fun. They might make it more fun just because they're around, but it's not their fucking job. It is your job to make your life awesome. I was just talking to Madeline who films all of these and is like my partner in crime. I see her a million times a week or together all the time. And we were just talking about a shoot that I want to do. It involves lingerie and a fur coat and a neon fucking Christmas tree. And I'm basically going to go to a park with her and flash the camera. It's going to be amazing. And the reason we're doing that is because this is the one life that you get. No one else is going to do these things for you. If you have these crazy fun ideas, you have to act on them. No one else is going to drag you and make you do it. They're not, even I'm not going to drag you and make you do it because it's not my job. All I can do, all any of us can do is live in a big, bold, beautiful way and hope that we are inspiring enough to ourselves and to other people that they want to live the same kind of life, that they want to follow in those footsteps, that they also want to be like, fuck it, let's go. I have done so many things in my life that were a gamble, that were challenging, that I had no idea how they were going to turn out. When I was 24, I moved to New York and I moved there by accident. I was living in Melbourne, Australia with my boyfriend at the time. We flew to New York for his birthday to celebrate. We went to a raw chocolate rave. It was really fun. We hung out in New York for a week and then he went back to Australia and I was like, I'm going to stay here for as long as I can. I had a friend who I'd met through the internet and blogging, of course, and I was going to stay on her couch. And after about a week of me staying with her, she lost her temper with me and was like, you got to go. You can't stay here. So I'm 24, I have like one suitcase, not a whole lot of money. And I was like, wow, am I about to be homeless in New York? No, I was not about to be homeless in New York. I booked a hotel room for two nights, the Sofitel in Times Square. And then I started combing through Craigslist ads. And I was like, what the fuck am I gonna do? Where am I gonna stay? And I started looking at sublets that were available. I found this place in the West Village that was $2,500 a month. Did I have that much money? No, I certainly did not. But I was like, I am going to figure it the fuck out. And I went to see that place. I really liked the people who were renting it out. I really liked the place, even though the toilet was in the hallway and the shower was in the kitchen because it's New York, baby. And I was like, here's my money. Take my money. Let's fucking go. And I stayed in that place for months and it was amazing. And I had the time of my fucking life. It was this beautiful, it was like a huge place for New York standards. And I would sit in the bed in the evenings with my laptop and I would work on my new book and I would go on cute dates with like these weird people that I had met on like OkCupid or whatever the fuck it was. And there was a guy who would wheel his piano into the square outside my window and play tunes till midnight every day because it's summer in New York and that's what happens. And it was amazing. I would walk around the city just so excited about the fact that anything could happen about the people I would see on the street. I ran into like Mark Jacobs and he was like, I love your hair. And I went to a party at Patricia Fields house and I did all these crazy fucking things that would have never happened if when my boyfriend left to go back to Australia, I was like, well, I don't know what's going to happen here. I'll go with you. Or when my friend who was like, you got to go, I was like, oh, I guess I'll go back to Australia. Fuck that shit. I wanted to be in New York. I figured it the fuck out. No, I didn't know what was going to happen. I could have ended up in like a basement apartment in Bushwick. Who knows? 
Who knows? But that's part of the gamble and it's part of my story. And it's like I had to go through all of those things to be where I am today. I live in LA. I love my fucking life. I live in such a nice place. I've never lived in a place so nice. And it's like all of these steps were essential on the way to get there. But you don't get there unless you get off the fucking couch and turn off the goddamn television and do something different. This week we are being invited to rise to the challenge. So please heed the call, remember my words, and be like, okay, I'm gonna take the fucking risk. And yeah, you might fall on your face. You might fuck it up. You might have some kind of disaster. Like, yes, that's my story of New York, but lots of things happened in that time. I like met someone and got married and then we got divorced and that wasn't that fun. Like there's lots of fucked up things that happened along the way, but it's part of the story. And I have the mindset that anything that's hard or bad or whatever that happens to me, I take that shit and I twist it and I use it as leverage to do something better. I got divorced and I was like, Oh, like the divorce itself, like the lead up to the divorce where you're like, have to tell your husband you don't want to be with him anymore. That shit is hard. But as soon as he was like out of my apartment, my life was so good. I got a fucking book deal. I took that money and I went to Morocco and Italy with two of my best friends. I got a boob job. Like, dude, my life was awesome. Life rips and you get to choose what you want to do with these things that supposedly are a problem. You get to completely change your story based on that. Use that shit as leverage to be somebody different. After my last breakup, I moved to LA. I was like, fuck New York. I'm done. I'm going to start again. I put my address on Instagram. People came and bought basically all of my shit. I moved to LA with clothes, books, and a coffee machine. That's pretty much it. And I started again and my life here is so good. And none of these things would have happened if I hadn't like taken that risk to come to New York in the first place. It's all part of the chain. So for fuck's sake, please don't play it safe. It's like the almost the end of the year. And yes, you could lie on your couch and eat fucking, I don't know, Ferrero Rocher. That's like my favorite shit and just be like, whatever, like there's, you know, 10 days till the end of the year, I don't care. But you could achieve something miraculous in this last two weeks. You could book a flight somewhere. You could completely change your shit up. There is no like, oh, I, it all starts on January 1st. Like, no, you get to do that right now if you want to. So I really wanna encourage you like I hope my stories inspire you to like take the risk and do something wild. And if you have done something wild, I want you to comment it below. I want you to tell us about what you've done that was amazing because every person who shares a comment like that inspires the people that read it afterwards. So please don't be shy about what you've gone through and what you've experienced. It's really important that we tell other people so they know that it's possible for them too. So now we're going to tap on this idea that you are the star of your own movie. It's going to be so good. I think this will be fantastic. So we're going to start on the top of the head. Just repeat after me and let's fucking go. Yes. Okay, here we go. I am the star of my own movie. Even though I haven't always felt that way. Like maybe sometimes I feel like a co-star. Or just a fucking extra. Today I declare that I am the star of my own goddamn movie. And because I'm the star of my movie, I get to choose what the movie's about. Is my movie a horror movie? Is it a romantic comedy? Is it a drama? Is it a musical? I get to choose. And so today I declare that I am going to take chances and I am going to take risks and I am going to do wonderful, exciting things. 
in the name of making this movie awesome. I don't want my movie to be called Gala scrolls through Instagram again. And I don't want my movie to be called Groundhog Day. And I don't want my movie to be called Look What This Bitch Puts Up With. I want my movie to be amazing. I want my movie to be full of magic and romance and grand adventures and taking the leap, the leap into the unknown, which by the way is the only place a leap can go into the unknown. I want to make my life the best movie possible. I am going to choose my co-stars with care. I am going to do my own set decorating. I am going to do my own costuming. I am going to choose the soundtrack. And in saying that, what I really mean is I'm going to choose my friends carefully. I am going to have a delicious home that I decorate with love. I am going to dress like I am the fucking star of my own movie. And I'm only going to listen to good music. Because life is too short to listen to bad music. So this week when I come up against challenges. Or when something happens that kind of freaks me out. I am going to think. What would the star of my movie do? Would I take the chance or would I go to bed? What's going to make a better movie? What's going to make a better story? Because I know that when I take the risk, my life will be more fulfilling. I know that when I rise to the occasion, My life will be more fun. And I know that when I practice the things I'm not good at, I am becoming the person I want to be. I'm getting closer to that person every single day. So this week I am going to be a fucking star. And for every week after this too. And the best thing is, no one can stop me. Because it's my fucking movie. Okay, take a deep breath in, hold it at the top, and let it go. Now your homework is to tell us about this movie. What's the plot of this movie? What does this bad bitch get up to? We want to hear about it. Tell us about it. Make it sexy. Give us like sparks and explosions and wonderful things. Give us risks and adventures and fabulous Indiana Jones-esque moments. Give us the good shit. That is your homework this week. And as soon as you've written that comment, I want you to get up from where you are, whether you're watching this on your phone, your laptop, your computer, I want you to get up and go somewhere else. Go do something. Leave your fucking house. Go do something exciting. This is your one life. You are in charge. Go do something spectacular. I love you. Merry Christmas. I'll see you next week.